Delta Airlines is a major American airline known for its global reach and extensive domestic and international flight network. As a company, Delta values safety, customer service, and operational excellence. Typical job responsibilities at Delta Airlines vary based on the position, but may include tasks such as flight operations, customer service, aircraft maintenance, and corporate functions. Benefits for Delta Airlines employees are typically comprehensive and may include health and dental insurance, retirement plans, travel privileges for employees and their families, paid time off, career development opportunities, and various employees' discounts and perks. Delta Airlines aims to foster a positive work environment and encourages professional growth and advancement within the company. This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an assessment test and get you hired for your dream job. When companies are hiring, very frequently, HR and hiring managers would like to test the candidate to make sure candidate possesses the skills and knowledge that will make him successful in the job. To determine the answer, employers use a computerized assessment tests to assess candidate's skills and experience relevant to the job. Assessment tests are also helpful to determine candidate's potential and make sure a new hire makes the right decisions on the job. Most of the test consists of multiple choice questions where you as a candidate are presented with the question and you need to find and select the answer based on the choices presented. Typical assessment test consists of multiple questions and most of the times test is timed which means that you need to complete the test within predefined time frame. There are different types of questions used to assess the candidate's skills based on the position you're applying for. In this video, I'll share with you sample mechanical aptitude test questions, engineering test questions, cognitive abilities test, verbal reasoning, personality, work simulation, leadership, and a lot of other types of questions we frequently see on the test. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for the assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description and in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. In this section, we will look at the work simulation test, which is used to evaluate candidates' ability to perform tasks and skills required for the job. The questions on this type of test typically involve simulated scenarios and tasks that are similar to what the candidate would encounter on the job, such as data analysis, customer service, and problem solving. Let's look at some sample work simulation assessment test questions to get you ready. Here's a very interesting question to determine how well you can work with others. You need to determine what is the best way to schedule a meeting with the client who is based in a different time zone and has limited availability. You need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, schedule the meeting without considering the client's time zone. Choice B, email the client with several date and time options without specifying the time zone. Choice C, check the client's time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. And last but not least, choice D, schedule the meeting during your manager's preferred time slot without considering the client's availability or time zone. Take a close look to see if you can select the right answer. And I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice C. Option C is the best choice because it takes into consideration the client's availability and time zone. There are two stakeholders in this action, your manager and your client. And you need to check the time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. This will ensure that the meeting is scheduled at a convenient time for both parties and this minimizes the risk of confusion and miscommunication. Let's also look at other options to determine why they might be incorrect. Let's look at option A. It is wrong because it ignores the client's time zone, which will lead to scheduling conflicts. Option B is also incorrect because it does not specify the time zone, which can cause confusion and miscommunication. 
And last but not least, option D is incorrect as well because it disregards the client's availability and time zone, which can lead to scheduling conflicts and damage the company's reputation. When you solved this challenge on your own, did you come up with a different answer? If this is the case, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Very frequently on the test, companies look at your customer service skills. This is one of these types of questions. You work as a CSR and need to help troubleshoot internet connectivity. What is the best approach to troubleshoot slow internet speeds for a customer? You're presented with four choices and you need to select one. Choice A, ask the customer to restart their modem and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice B, ask the customer to restart their computer and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice C, ask the customer to check their internet connection and transfer to technical support if the issue persists. And last but not least, choice D, walk the customer through the thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. If you need to pause this video, feel free to do this to reread the answers and select the correct one. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it or have a different important considerations, please make sure to bring them up in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice D. To remind you, in choice D, you would need to walk the customer through a thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Only this approach shows your commitment to providing excellent customer service and may even resolve the issue without need for technical support transfer. One important thing to note, the original question is kind of convoluted and it uses the acronyms. Just to clarify for you, CSR stands for Customer Service Representative. And now let's look at the incorrect choices, choices A, B and C to see why they are incorrect. I think those options are incorrect because they only involve asking the customer to perform a single action and then transferring them to technical support. This approach may not resolve the issue and it may result in a customer having to wait longer for the resolution. Did you come up with a different answer? If you did, please make sure to post your answer, considerations and thought process in comments. Here's a very interesting question on how to provide recommendation to your manager for the new product line. Your manager wants you to provide a recommendation on whether to continue investing in the new product line based on your analysis of the sales data. What is the best approach to analyze the sales data and provide the recommendation? You're presented with four different choices. Let's look at each one of them. Choice A, conduct a simple analysis of the sales data and provide recommendation based on initial findings. Choice B, conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. Choice C, provide a recommendation based on personal opinion and expertise without conducting any analysis of the sales data. And last but not least, choice D, provide a recommendation based on the sales data from a similar product line without analyzing the sales data for the new product line. Take a close look to see if you can select the correct answer. Are you ready? Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think the correct answer here is choice B. In choice B, you need to conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. I think this choice is correct because it allows you to provide a thorough understanding of the sales data, ensuring more accurate and informed recommendation. Conducting a comprehensive analysis of the sales data is essential in making an informed decision for your manager. Let's also look at the incorrect choices to determine why they are incorrect. Option A is too simplistic and can get the result in an incomplete assessment of the sales data. Option C is unreliable and can be seen as unprofessional since it's based on personal opinion and experience without any supporting data. And last but not least, choice D is not recommended since it involves using sales data from a similar product line, which may not be relevant to the new product line. Was your answer different? If it was, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for cognitive test, which represents an assessment used by employers to evaluate candidates' mental abilities, such as problem solving, critical thinking, and memory. The questions in the test can vary, 
but typically involve math problems, logic puzzles, spatial reasoning, and verbal comprehension. Let's look at some sample cognitive assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Which was initially designed to test your spatial reasoning, but also could be used to test your cognitive abilities and analytical skills. You're presented with four shapes, and you need to find the square which fits all the shapes across the borderlines. You need to select one square out of four possible choices based on the borderlines presented. Choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can identify the item. Seems challenging, don't you think so? Let me give you a hint. Try to see if you need to rotate the shapes or do any other manipulations with the shapes before trying to fit them. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Not sure about you, but I was able to solve this challenge in three simple steps. In step one, you need to assign the numbers. In step two, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit. And in the last step three, you need to try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes across the separator lines. Let's look at the example. Let's first assign each shape a number. Because we have four shapes, the numbers will be one, two, three, and four. The second step is the hardest. In this step, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit and you need to find the closest square which fits all the shapes. Let's rotate each shape to get them into the correct position. Let's rotate shape 1, now shape 2, now shape 3, and now shape 4. You need to watch out because rotation could be in the different directions, as it happens in this question as well. And once you have all the shapes rotated correctly, we need to move to step 3, where we will try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes. Square A is not going to fit them because there are five shapes based on the borderlines. Square C also is not going to fit them. Same with square D. So the only correct answer here is choice B. Did you get to the same conclusion? Or maybe you found a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to validate your analytical skills and spatial reasoning. You're presented with the square, which is broken down into four parts. Three parts are filled with different shapes, and fourth part is missing. You need to determine which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. And you need to select this choice out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can meet the condition and select the right shape. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's better understand what we're dealing with. We have five types of shapes. We have L-shape, we have a semicircle, we have a semi-diamond, semi-heart, and rectangle. Each one of the shapes is located in a small square, and each one of the shapes has one, two, or three dots inside of it. Now, large square is broken into four small squares. Let's give each one of the small squares an ID. We'll call them area one, area 2, area 3, and then comes the missing area, which we need to fill would be area 4. If we go back to the original question, our goal is to identify which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. Let's look closely at what most symmetrical might mean. Let's draw a horizontal symmetrical line and let's draw a vertical symmetrical line to help us define the symmetry in the large square. Let's look at the easiest symmetrical objects we can identify. For example, between area 1 and area 2, we can build the full yellow diamond. And to do this, we will use the two half diamond objects with one dot. Between area 2 and area 3, we can build a full heart using the semi hearts and one dot on each side. The choice that we would need to select would help us build the circle between areas 1 and 4, and the circle would be green and will have one dot. And the correct choice will also help us build the symmetrical L-shaped object between areas 3 and 4, which will have two dots. Two choices match both of these criteria, and these choices are A and B. Which one do you think we should select? Let's look closely to see if we can determine some additional patterns. For example, across horizontal line, if we look, there is a red L-shape and blue L-shape. So the key here is L-shape. 
it's on the both sides of the horizontal symmetrical line. Same thing with green triangle in area 3. And potentially we would need to have yellow triangle or triangle of other color in the area 4. We can also see the symmetry diagonally across the horizontal symmetrical line. For example, a red L shape in area 1 has two dots and green triangle in area 3 has two dots as well which means that the missing object should have three dots symmetrical to the blue L shape. So the triangle in area 4 will need to have three dots. Very similar symmetry exists between rectangle in area 2 and area 4. It should be a rectangle in area 4 and rectangle should have three dots as well. Based on all of this analysis, I think the correct choice here is choice A. Did you detect any other symmetries or did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your version, answer and solution in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20. And this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. Here's the very interesting question which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions. And in fourth expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 17 height. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In force expression 7 plus 3, you need to find the result, which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions, subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I give you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. Second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. 
That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final force expression, which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. You will enjoy this question because it tests your logical thinking and analytical skills. You are presented with the dart in the exact middle of the dartboard. Dart has numbers on top of the ribbon and at the end of the ribbon. The numbers on the ribbon are 13, 18, 41, 128, and 517. Numbers at the end of the ribbon are 18, 41, 128, 517, and then comes the missing number you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choices A, 1,921, choice B, 2029, choice C, 2359, and last but not least, choice D, 2590. Give yourself a moment, maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the answer. Are you ready? Let's move forward so I can share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, to answer this question, let's understand what we're dealing with. Since this game may not be very familiar in all the parts of the world, let's start with the definition. Darts is the competitive sport in which players throw small sharp-pointed missiles, known as darts, at the round target known as dartboard. Now, let's look closely at the dart we're dealing with. Our dart is unique because it has ribbons. There is a number on the ribbon and there is a calculated number at the end of the ribbon. To complete the calculations, let's assign each ribbon unique number. We're dealing with ribbons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And, as you might have already figured out, the number at the end of the ribbon is calculated based on the sequence ID and number on top of the ribbon itself. The formula to do the calculations is that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as number on top of the ribbon multiplied by sequence ID plus 5. Let's look at the example. The first blue ribbon has the sequence number 1, so that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as 13 multiplied by 1 plus 5, which would be equals 18. The second ribbon number is calculated as 18 multiplied by 2 plus 5 equals 41. The third ribbon number is calculated as 41 multiplied by 3 plus 5 equals 128. And the fourth ribbon number is calculated as 128 multiplied by 4 plus 5 equals 517. Now we know how to calculate the missing number. The missing number is calculated as 517 multiplied by 5 plus 5, which would be equal to 2590. So the correct answer here is choice D, 2590. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. And now I have a practice question for you. Here I'm not going to reveal the solution, but instead I'm going to ask you to solve the challenge and post your answer in the comments so I can give you my feedback. In this question, you're presented with the scale, which consists of multiple shapes. Scale remains in balance, and you need to calculate the missing value of the diamond as well as the total sum. Once you're done with your analysis and calculations, you need to select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 18 and 96. Choice B, 12 and 88. Choice C, 20 and 92. And last but not least, choice D, 19 and 94. Do you have your answer? Please make sure to post your answer, solution, and rationale in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning. You're presented with the three-dimensional view and you need to select view from the opposite side out of four possible choices. The choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can select the right solution. Please look closely as it may not be as easy as it seems. Are you ready? Because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, obviously, please make sure to post in comments. If your answer to this question was choice C, you answered it correctly. There are four objects on the original three-dimensional image. We have a duck, we have a basketball, we have a smartphone, and we have a hammer, 
which is barely noticeable on the original picture. And the easiest way to solve this challenge is to select one object and track it on the opposite side. I selected a duck, but you can as well select a hammer or a smartphone. It is a little bit harder with the ball because it's in the middle and it's a symmetrical object. So let's go back to the duck. If you look at the original image, you see that the duck is looking to the left and it is on the left side of the ball, which means that if we look from the opposite side, the duck will be looking to the right and would be on the right side of the ball. We frequently see these types of questions on the test, so to help you solve these types of challenges, here are the views of these objects from a different sides. Take a look at these objects from the right, from the left side, and take a look at this set of objects when duck and the ball have changed the position. I wanted to ask you, did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments, as well as you can supplement it with some tips on how to solve these types of challenges. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity, and it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise, and you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent, and each bill equals one dollar. You need to identify all coins and all bills and count the total value. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, $10.18. Choice B, $12.09. Choice C, $15.15. And last but not least, choice D, $18.07. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, $10.18. And here's why. I counted $10 in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three, four. And then on the right, we see another group of the dollar bills. There are $5 there. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. And then we see the hard to notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see nine coins to the right of the flower pot. Then we see eight coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18. If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. This is one of my favorite questions just because it's so unusual. But the answer here is very simple. You're presented with the set of eight circles. Six of the circles are visible, and you need to select two missing ones. You have four different choices to find the missing circles. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To answer this question, we need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. Each circle is broken down into sections with darker sections and lighter sections. And if you look closely, you will see that all circles are grouped in pairs. And the pattern is hidden in the sequence for circle pairs, with each subsequent pair being similar to the previous one. Let's take a close look. To better understand the pattern, let's give each circle a unique number. If we start with the top row of circles, the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and the bottom row of circles will have numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, with 7 and 8 being our missing pair. If you look closely at the circle 1, you will see that there is a dark section at the 2 o'clock, and circle 2 has two dark sections, one at noon and another one is at 2 o'clock. Similar pattern you see in circles 3 and 4, and then circles 5 and 6 also mimic the same pattern. Looking at possible answers, you see the choices A, B, C do not meet this pattern, and the only right answer that fits the pattern is choice D. Hopefully you've got to the same conclusion, and if you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. In 
this section, we will look at some sample mechanical aptitude questions you typically see on the test. A mechanical aptitude test is an assessment designed to measure a person's understanding of mechanical principles and their ability to apply them in various situations. Mechanical aptitude tests typically assess several key areas, including mechanical comprehensions questions, which gauge your understanding of basic mechanical principles such as gears, pulleys, levers, and simple machines. You also get spatial reasoning questions in this test, which assess your ability to mentally manipulate the objects in three-dimensional space. Some questions focus on tools and instruments, and they evaluate your familiarity with common tools and instruments used in mechanical work. And last but not least category is mechanical problem-solving questions, which present you with mechanical problems or scenarios and test your ability to analyze and solve them. Let's look at some sample mechanical aptitude questions we typically see on the test. Here is the challenging problem by solving which you will boost your cognitive abilities. You're presented with five hints, and using these hints, you need to unlock the code and open the lock. The hints are, in the digits 248, only one digit is correct and well placed. In the digits 845, two digits are correct, but not correctly placed. In the digits 461, only one digit is correct, and it is correctly placed. In the digits 592, only one digit is correct, and it is well placed. And last but not least, hint that in the digits 904, none of the digits are correct. To open the lock, you need to process all the hints and select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, 518. Choice B, 485. Choice C, 418. And last but not least, choice D, 568. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I'm pretty sure you're done solving it by now, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer and solution. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, you solve this problem through elimination. And I'm going to start with the hint number 5, because it's the most helpful of all. Once we've learned that in combination 904 none of the digits are correct, we can eliminate two possible answers. We can eliminate both choices B and C because both of them have digit 4, which is an incorrect digit. Let's continue elimination to get to the correct answer. If we look through the remaining four hints, we learn that in hint 1, where digits are 2, 4, 8, only one digit is correctly placed, which is digit 8. In hint 2, two digits are correct, but they're not correctly placed, and they're digits 8 and 5. In hint 3, only one digit 6 is correct, and it is correctly placed. And last but not least, in hint 4, digit 5 is correct and it is well placed. Based on this, the correct answer here is choice D, 568. Do you have any hints to show how to best solve these types of challenges? If you do, please make sure to post them in comments. This is one of the most exciting questions because it allows you to test your analytical skills and understanding of physics. You need to determine which fan throws more air if all the fans rotate at the same speed. The choices are fan A, fan B, fan C, and last but not least, choice D, neither fan. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might be well aware, there are two key factors to help determine the airflow rate. The first one is the size of the fan's blade, and the second one is rotational speed of the fan, which is measured in RPMs, which stands for revolution per minute. A fan with the larger blades can capture and move more air per revolution compared to the same fan design with the smaller blades. And this is exactly what we're dealing with here in this question. In addition, the rotational speed of the fan affects the airflow design. The higher RPM generally results in a higher airflow rate as the fan blades are able to move through the air at the faster rate. As you can see here, the fans A, B, and C all have the same design. This is why, given the fact that three fans have the same design but different sizes, the fan with the largest size will throw more air compared to the smaller fans. This is why the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please share your answer and rationale in comments. And now I have a question for you to practice your skills. 
you are presented with the seesaw. On the left of the seesaw, there is a weight. And on the right side of the seesaw, there is an acrobat. You need to determine in which direction should the acrobat move his body to balance the seesaw. And you have two choices. Choice A to the left or choice B to the right. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. And once ready, make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. Let's look at the question where you need to determine the trajectory after parachutists jump from the plane. Obviously, based on the wind and other external conditions, there would be multiple choices. But fortunately, you need to select only one out of four possible choices. Choices A, B and C. And if none of the choices A, B and C is correct, you need to select choice D, which would represent neither one. Take a close look to see what is the parachutist's trajectory after jumping from the plane. I have full confidence in your skills and knowledge, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To better understand the answer, we need to determine what changes from when parachutist is inside the plane and when parachutist jumps from the plane. When parachutist is inside the plane, both the parachutist and the airplane are moving together in the same direction. When parachutist jumps from the plane, there are multiple forces that will determine the trajectory. Number one is inertia. According to Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, the parachutists will continue moving forward in the direction of the plane. Initially, the parachutists will have the velocity they had inside the plane, but they will slow down over time due to air resistance. Another force that will define the trajectory is the force of gravity. As soon as the parachutist leaves the plane, they will be subject to the force of gravity. Gravity pulls the parachutist downward toward the earth. And the last force that will drive the trajectory would be acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is the force that pulls objects toward the earth. When something is in the air, gravity causes it to fall toward the ground. The acceleration due to gravity is always the same for all objects near the earth's surface and it means that objects will fall faster and faster the longer they fall. So let's look closely at what's going to happen after parachutist jumps. After jumping, the parachutist initially maintains the horizontal velocity due to inertia. Once outside the airplane, they accelerate downward due to gravity until they reach terminal velocity. The deployment of the parachute increases air resistance, allowing for controlled descent, allowing parachutists to land safely. The closest answer that describes the solution is choice A. Is this what you got in your answer? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments so we can all learn. I love this question because it truly tests your knowledge of mechanical engineering. You are presented with acrobat and the weight on the seesaw. You need to determine in which direction should the acrobat move his body to balance the seesaw. And you only have two choices. Choice A to the left or choice B to the right. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might be well aware, the seesaw is an example of a lever where fulcrum is between the effort and the load. In our example, we have a weight on the left side of the seesaw and acrobat on the right side of the seesaw. The key principle of balancing the seesaw is when a force is applied to the end of the lever, the lever can lift the weight at the other end. For the seesaw to be balanced, the torque applied to the acrobat must increase. Since the acrobat's weight is constant, the only way to increase the input torque is by increasing the distance from the fulcrum. If acrobat moves in the direction B, this will shift the acrobat's center of gravity further from the fulcrum, resulting in a greater torque, thereby balancing it. So the correct answer here is choice B, moving the acrobat to the right. And now I have a question for you to practice your skills. We have a three different scenarios of person moving the object. Choices A, B, and C. If all items weight the same, which object would be easiest to move forward if the same person is pushing with equal force? You need to select one out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, or choice D, neither one. 
When you solve this challenge, please make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an amazing problem where you need to exercise your brain and cognitive skills by calculating not just one number, but two numbers. You're presented with the scale and you see that the value of diamond as well as the sum values are missing. And you need to ensure that scale remains balanced by calculating the value of the diamond as well as the sum. And once you've done with your calculations, you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, values 18 and 96. Choice B, values 12 and 88. Choice C, values 20 and 92. And last but not least, choice D, values 19 and 94. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can complete the calculations. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the calculations. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's look at the picture closely to better understand what we're dealing with. We're presented with the multi-tier scale. And the scale has four tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Scale remains in balance because values on the left side and on the right side are equal and the values are represented by the total of numbers inside of each shape. For example, circle has number 12, hexagon has number 6, triangle has number 3, and square has number 4. Let's look closely at tier 3 to better understand how this tier remains in balance. As I already mentioned, each tier remains in balance because the numbers are equal on both sides. So on the left of the tier 3, we have two hexagons with total value of 12. On the right of the tier 3, we have hexagon, which equals number 6, plus 2 triangles, 3 plus 3. So on both sides, the total value is 12. This is why tier 3 remains in balance. Now let's look closely at the tier 2. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles. Each circle has a value of 12. Two circles would be equal 24. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles with total value of 24 and the entire tier 3, which also equals 24. This is what keeps tier 2 in balance. Now, knowing this logic, we can calculate the missing value on tier 4. Because tier 4 needs to remain in balance, the value of 12 plus 6 should be equal to the missing value, which means that the missing value is 18. And the total sum will be calculated as the sum of all the numbers. The sum of tier 2 and tier 3 would be 24 plus 24 plus 48 on the right side of tier 1, which would equal 96. So the correct answer here is choice A, 18 and 96. Did you get to the different answer? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of mechanical movement of objects. You are presented with the picture of person moving the object and you need to determine if all objects weigh the same, which one will be easiest to move forward if the same person is pushing with equal force. You need to select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, person moving forward a cube. Choice B, person moving forward a hexagon. Choice C, person moving forward a ball. And last but not least is neither one. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's analyze all shapes individually to better understand the answer. Let's start with the cube. Cube typically has a symmetrical weight distribution, which can contribute to its stability when moving on the ground. However, due to its edges and corners, a cube can experience higher levels of friction when compared to objects with rounded shapes and will be hard to roll most likely way of moving the cube forward would be pushing it, which will create a lot of resistance. Now let's look at the hexagon. Hexagon has six sides and the shape can vary depending upon the specific dimensions and proportions. Compared to a cube, a hexagon is generally has fewer edges and corners, which reduces the friction and makes it easier to move on the ground by rolling. Even though it might be easier to move than the cube, the ease of movement will also depend on the specific dimensions and weight distribution of the hexagon. Which brings us to choice C, sphere or ball, which typically has a smooth surface. The absence of edges and corners reduces the contact area with the ground, which results in a lower friction. 
This makes it easier to move the ball forward by rolling on the ground, compared to objects with edges or corners. This is why choice C is correct. It will have minimum friction and will facilitate smooth movement with minimum resistance. In this section, we will look at the personality assessment test questions. A personality assessment test is a type of psychological evaluation used during the hiring process to assess candidates' personality traits, behavioral tendencies, and work-related preferences. This test aims to provide insights on how a candidate might behave, interact with others, and fit into the company's culture. The typical purpose of personality assessment is to gauge a candidate's suitability for a particular job or work environment based on their personality traits. Personality assessment test helps employers to identify individuals who possess the desired characteristics and align with the organizational values. Let's look at some sample personality assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Here's a very interesting question which you cannot just answer because you need a strategy and approach on how to answer. You need to select from two statements, one that best describes you and one that describes you the least. And your choices for selections are Choice A, I should have all the information before making the decision. Choice B, I easily communicate with people. Choice C, I like to take responsibility for my team. And last but not least, choice D, I prefer long-term projects over short-term ones. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. And more importantly, you need to decide on what type of considerations you would choose to answer this particular question. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think is that the most important consideration here to answer this question is job relevance. You need to consider the requirements and responsibilities of the role that you're applying for. For example, one differentiation might be individual contributor role versus a leadership role. By doing this differentiation, the describe me the most will identify statements that will demonstrate the good fit for the particular job position. And for describe me the least will provide reasons why based on the position this may not be applicable. And obviously you would need to support the answer with the examples from your past career. Let's look at how you might consider answering this question if you're applying for individual contributor jobs. The individual contributor jobs is where you as individual responsible for the outcomes. Samples of these jobs might be data analyst, research scientist, software engineer, quality assurance specialist, financial analyst, technical writer, graphics designer, and a lot of others. Here the preferential answers would be choices A and D. Let's look at choice A first. Choice A, I should have all the information before making the decision. The statement for individual contributor job suggests the preference for thoughtfulness and careful decision making. In an individual contributor role, it's important to be detailed-oriented and make informed decisions based on available information. This trait can be valuable in roles that require precise execution and attention to details. Choice D, I prefer long-term projects over short-term ones, is also preferred for individual contributor roles. This statement indicates a preference for working on the projects that have longer duration. In an individual contributor role, this trait may be beneficial for tasks or projects that require patience, persistence, and focus on long-term goals. It suggests an ability to sustain effort and commitment over the extended periods of time. Now, if you're applying for leadership position, you might consider choosing choices B and C as the ones that would represent you as a candidate for this position. Leadership positions are positions like team lead, project manager, director, vice president, department manager, sales manager, marketing manager, operations managers, human resources manager, and a lot of others. Let's look at both choices B and C individually to see why selecting them might be beneficial when applying for leadership positions. Choice B, I easily communicate with people. The statement highlights strong interpersonal communication skills, which are essential for a leadership position. Effective communication is a crucial for building relationships, conveying information, and motivating and influencing others. Strong communication skills can contribute for successful leadership and collaboration within the team. Choice C, I like to take responsibility for my team, highlights the desire to take ownership and accountability for the success in the team. 
in a leadership position, the ability to assume responsibility, provide guidance, and support team members is crucial. It indicates a willingness to lead by example, make decisions, and make necessary actions to drive team performance and achieve goals. One important point to understand is that I'm not asking you to provide an incorrect answers. I'm asking you to decide how your past experiences can be helpful to the role you're applying for. There is a valid you selected to apply for this particular position. And the reason is because you believe your qualifications are aligned with position description. So what you need to do here, answering this question, you need to align the answers with the job requirements. My three recommendations for you on how to answer these types of questions is provide authenticity, provide self-reflection, and provide supporting examples. Let's look at each one individually to help you decide how to answer this particular question. Let's look at number one, authenticity. You need to provide honest and genuine responses that accurately reflect your personality traits and tendencies. It is essential to be true to yourself and true to your employer rather than trying to present what you think the employer might be looking for. Number two is self-reflection. Take a moment to reflect on your own characteristics and behaviors. Consider your strengths, weaknesses, preferences, and areas where you excel or struggle. And number three, think of the supporting examples. Justify your choices by providing specific examples or instances from your past experience. This helps add credibility to your responses and allows the employer to understand your reasons and thought process. Next, I'm going to share with you my answer if you're applying for the leadership position. And I'm also going to ask you to provide your answer for the individual contributor role. For example, if you're applying for leadership position, I recommend that you choose choice C and choice A. Choice C, I like to take responsibility for my team, would represent the answer that best describes you. Your actual justification for this choice may sound like this. As a leader, I thrive on guiding and supporting my team towards success. I believe that fostering a collaborative and empowering work environment where individuals can grow and excel. Taking responsibility for my team means ensuring their development, providing guidance when needed, and creating a cohesive and motivated group that can achieve outstanding results. The statement that describes you the least might be choice A, and choice A states, I should have all the information needed before making the decision. The justification for the answer might be, while I value the thoughtfulness and informed decision-making, as a leader, I understand that time-sensitive situations may require making decisions with a limited information. I am comfortable relying on my experience, intuition, and the input of trusted team members to make timely decisions while considering the available information. I'm also open to adjusting decisions as more information becomes available to ensure the best possible outcomes. Now, what do you think the answer should be for the individual contributor role? Please make sure to post your answer, recommendation, and justification in comments of this video so we can all learn. I love this question because it tests candidates' ability to prioritize as well as candidates' leadership skills. You're presented with the question where you need to select two statements. One statement that best describes you and another that describes you the least. The four possible answers to this question would be A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. Choice B. I work even better when everything goes wrong. Choice C. I think small details are important. And last but not least, choice D. I like to be best player on my team. Take a close look to see if you can come up with two answers. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's first look at the important considerations on how you can select the right answer. There are three important considerations here, and they all fall into one category, job relevance. You need to consider the requirements and responsibilities of the role you're applying for. Number two, you need to think about how each statement relates to the demands of the position. And last but not least, number three, you need to choose the statement that demonstrates a good fit for the job and showcases qualities that would be beneficial for the specific context. Let's take a look at how you would select the right answer in the specific categories. Let's start by looking at the choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. If you choose this answer, it would show that you are a self-structured person that could work independently. Choice B. I work even better when everything goes wrong 
shows your stress tolerance, your ability to work in stressful and unpredictable situations. Choice C, I think small details are important, would show your level of attention to details that could be important for jobs such as accounting, programming, controller, and other jobs that require attention to details. And last but not least, choice D, I like to be the best player on my team, shows how competitive you are. This is a good choice for the sales position, but could be a problematic choice for the manager roles. Let's look at the examples of the choices that best describe me. One of the choices that you might select would be choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. I am a very disciplined person. I can independently prioritize different tasks and I can take responsibility of the results of my job. I prefer to organize my work schedule by myself without overattention from managers. I can be much more productive by working in this way. This is why I selected the choice A. I can organize my work schedule by myself. Now let's look at the choice that least describes you and considerations you might consider providing. For that statement, I selected choice D. I like to be the best player on my team. Of course, I want to show off my skills and I want results be fairly evaluated. But I understand the importance of teamwork for good results. And in this way, I can do a back office job when it's necessary. I will put overall results of my team in the first place, even if it's temporary slows down my own results and my progress. Do you have any other suggestions on how you can answer this type of questions? Please make sure to post them in comments so we can all learn. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for verbal reasoning test for employment, which typically represents an assessment used by employers to measure candidates' ability to comprehend and analyze written information. The questions typically involve reading passages, answering questions based on the information presented, as well as identifying relationships between words and understanding the vocabulary. Let's look at some sample questions that you typically see on the test to make sure you get ready. Here's an amazing question which tests your logical reasoning and verbal reasoning skills. You're presented with three verbal statements and you need to determine if the final statement is true. The first statement is most small businesses are family owned. The second statement is most family owned businesses are profitable. And the last statement, most small businesses are profitable. Is this statement true? You need to select out of three possible choices. Choice A, yes. Choice B, no. And last but not least, choice C is uncertain. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Because on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is A, yes. Which means that most small businesses are profitable. And this is the accurate statement. Which means that the statement, most small businesses are profitable, is true. Let me explain you why. If most small businesses are family owned, and most family owned businesses are profitable, then it stands to reason that most small businesses are also profitable. What's interesting to note about this question is that answer C uncertain might also be accurate, and some test systems might be configured to accept it as the accurate answer. And the main reason is that the relationship between the statements are unclear, or if there's insufficient information to make logical conclusions, you can answer uncertain. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. I love this question because the answer represents such a powerful business concept. You're presented with 10 letters and you need to build English business word by using each letter only once. The letters are N, I, N, A, V, O, N, I, T, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to the process of introducing new ideas, products, services, or processes that add value to society, the economy, or organizations. Did you figure it out? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, as usual, please make sure to post in comments. My answer is innovation, and the word is spelled as I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N.
What's interesting is that innovation involves combining creativity, technology, and practicality to develop new solutions that meet people's needs and address emerging challenges. Innovation is also crucial for the growth and development of the businesses, economies, and societies, and it drives competitiveness, productivity, and progress. Let's look at the examples of the most recent consumer innovations. Number one is streaming services. The popularity of streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu and Disney Plus disrupted the traditional TV industry by offering on-demand access to the vast library of movies and TV shows. The fact that I can broadcast my videos and share them with you directly is also part of streaming services innovation. The next one on my list is electric cars. The development of electric cars by companies such as Tesla, Nissan and Chevrolet has provided consumers with a more sustainable and energy efficient alternative to traditional gasoline powered vehicles. Another example of recent innovation is wearable technology. The emergence of wearable technologies such as smartwatches, fitness trackers and virtual reality headsets had powered people to track their health and fitness, stay connected and experience immersive digital content. We also recently enjoyed innovation of online marketplaces. Companies such as Amazon, eBay and Etsy revolutionized the way people shop by providing them with vast selection of products, competitive prices and fast delivery options. And last but not least on my list is the smart home technology. The rise of smart home technology allowed people to control and automate various aspects of their homes from lightning and temperature to security and entertainment using voice commands and mobile apps. Do you know any other examples of recent innovations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. A very interesting question for you to try your skills. You're presented with nine letters of the English alphabet and you need to build English business word. The letters are O-L-S-U-O-T-I-N-S. Take a close look to see if you can construct English business word. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to a set of products, services and strategies that are designed to solve specific business problems and meet the needs of organizations. Did you figure it out? The answer is solutions. Business solutions are typically developed by vendors or service providers who have expertise in particular industry or functional area. The word is spelled as S O L U T I O N S. And the goal of business solutions is to help organizations improve their efficiency, productivity, profitability, and overall performance by addressing specific challenges or opportunities in a strategic and effective manner. Can you come up with any other words using the same letters only once? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Very frequently, you might be presented with the question where you need to determine the relationship. This is one of these types of questions. You need to determine if CEO is to the company as choice A, quarterback is to football, choice B, director is to a movie, choice C, conductor is to orchestra, choice D, pilot is to plane, or choice E, chef is to restaurant. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right relationship. This is not an easy question, but keep in mind that you have a choice of pausing this video and maybe thinking about it for 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let me share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To understand the answer to this question, we need to understand who the CEO is. And the CEO, which stands for Chief Executive Officer, is responsible for making strategic decisions and overseeing the overall operations for the company. Knowing this information, let's build an analogy. CEO is to a company, is as a leader to the organization. In the next step, let's look at the choices we're presented with and build similar analogies. For example, quarterback is to football, is as a leader to the type of the sport. Choice B, director is to a movie, is as a leader to the final product of work. Choice C, conductor is to orchestra, is as a leader to the team. Choice D, pilot is to a plane, is similar to the leader of the machine. And last but not least, choice E, chef to the restaurant, is as a leader to the organization. As you can see, by eliminating the options that do not maintain the relationship, we found the correct pair of words that represent the correct analogy.
Based on this information, the correct answer here is choice E. Chef is to restaurant. Did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments. There is an amazing question to test your English business vocabulary. You need to build English business word using all the letters presented on the screen. And you only need to use each letter once. The letters are G-O-I-S-L-T-I-C-S. -S. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Because I want you to succeed so much, I'm going to give you a quick hint. The word represents the process of planning, implementing, and controlling the movements of storage of goods or materials from the point of origin to the point of consumption. Did you figure it out? I'm going to move forward and share with you my version of the answer. But if you have a better way or alternative way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The answer is logistics. The word is spelled as L-O-G-I-S-T. ICS. To get better at solving these types of challenges, try to visualize the word and try different combinations. For example, if you look at original nine letters, you will see that if we start from the middle, you can start building the word. L-O-G, and then you build the remainder of the word to get to the correct answer. Do you have any other tips, tricks, or techniques that can help you solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post them in comments. In this section, we will look at the logical reasoning questions that are used to evaluate candidates' ability to reason and draw logical conclusions from the information given. The questions on this type of test typically involve sequences of shapes and numbers, analogies, and deductive reasoning questions. Let's look at some sample logical reasoning assessment test questions to get you prepared. I love this challenge because it tests your analytical skills and spatial reasoning skills so well you need to find the resulting shape after the transformations. You're presented with the square that consists of different triangles of a different color. And you need to turn the original shape 90 degree clockwise three times. You have four different choices to select the shape after the transformations. Choice A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final solution. Did you figure it out? because I am moving forward to share with you my version and my way of solving it. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, you need to mentally turn the original shape 90 degrees three times. This is not easy to do because our brain is not really designed for this. But if we take one of the triangles and try to follow this triangle by turning the original square, this task might be much easier to accomplish. The caveat here is that, that we need to select triangles that are not symmetrical on both sides. For example, red triangles are symmetrical. You see red triangles on the left and red triangles on the right. And if we try to follow it, it would be extremely hard to detect where the red triangle will end up. But if we take green triangles, any one of them, or yellow triangles, they're much easier to follow. So let's do the turning. Let's take the original square and I am going to follow the green triangle on the left. Let's do the first turn 90 degrees. You see that the green triangle ended up on the top. Let's do another turn. We follow the same green triangle and now it's on the right side. And the last 90 degree turn, our green triangle ended up at the bottom. So the correct choice here is choice A, where green triangle ended up on the bottom. Do you have a better way to solve it? Or maybe did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your thoughts and rationale in comments. Here's a very interesting question which might make you think, but hopefully you will get it very quickly. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, how long will it take for 100 people to sew 100 shirts? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 500 minutes. Choice B, 100 minutes. Choice C, 5 minutes, and last but not least, choice D, 60 minutes. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the right answer. And on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, we can say that one person can sew a shirt in five minutes. Now, if 100 people work together, their combined productivity will be 100 that of a one person. 
Because we can scale up so easily in this production, it will take 100 people 5 minutes to sew 100 shirts. So the correct answer here is choice C, 5 minutes. Did you get to the same answer? If you didn't, please make sure to share your answer and rationale in comments. I love this question because it is used very frequently to test your analytical skills and business math skills. You're presented with three expressions. The first expression is candy multiplied by sun equals 15. Second expression is candy plus 4 equals 9. And third and last expression is 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. And you need to find this question mark and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 4. And choice D, 5. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? I think you might benefit from a quick hint. And my hint to you would be, take a look at the middle expression. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. This set of expressions looks unsolvable. But in reality, if we start with the middle expression, we can actually solve it. Let me demonstrate. Let's start with the expression candy plus 4 equals 9. Believe it or not, but we can actually calculate it. Candy would be equal 9 minus 4 and we can calculate the value for candy, which would be equal to 5. Now knowing the value of candy, let's focus on the top expression. Candy plus sun equals 15. We know that the value of candy is 5, and when we substitute candy, it would be equal 5 multiplied by sun equals 15. So the calculated value for the sun would be 3. And now we can focus on the last expression. 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. We know that the value of sun is 3, and we can substitute it, and the new expression will be 12 equals 3 multiplied by question mark. Question mark can be calculated by 12 divided by 4. So the end result would be answer C, 4. If you came up with the different answer, please post your answer and solution in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here, we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20, and this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. This is one of my favorite questions just because it's so unusual. But the answer here is very simple. You are presented with the set of 8 circles. 6 of the circles are visible and you need to select 2 missing ones. You have 4 different choices to find the missing circles. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To answer this question, we need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. Each circle is broken down into sections, with darker sections and lighter sections. And if you look closely, you will see that all circles are grouped in pairs. And the pattern is hidden in the sequence for circle pairs with each subsequent pair being similar to the previous one. 
Let's take a close look. To better understand the pattern, let's give each circle a unique number. If we start with the top row of circles, the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and the bottom row of circles will have numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, with 7 and 8 being our missing pair. If you look closely at the circle 1, you will see that there is a dark section at the 2 o'clock, and circle 2 has two dark sections, one at noon and another one is at 2 o'clock. Similar pattern you see in circles 3 and 4, and then circles 5 and 6 also mimic the same pattern. Looking at possible answers, you see the choices A, B, C do not meet this pattern, and the only right answer that fits the pattern is choice D. Hopefully you've got to the same conclusion, and if you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's the very interesting drum problem, which I have full confidence that you will solve very quickly. You're presented with three drums, and the next drum in the sequence is missing. You need to select the next drum out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? You would be surprised how simple the answer is. And that's why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, we need to understand the pattern. And the pattern will help us get to the correct solution. Even though drums and drumsticks look similar, this is not the case. If you look closely, you will see that only drumsticks are the same. But drums are different because they have dotted designs on each drum. Let me assign a unique number to each drum in the sequence. We will reference these drums as 1, 2, 3, and then the missing drum we will reference as number 4. Let's look closely at drum number 1. On the top of the drum 1, dotted pattern consists only of the white dots. But as it continues, you see different colors. Let's follow these colors. We have white, yellow, blue, pink, purple, and green. If we go to drum number two, you see that the dotted pattern shifts as it goes from left to right, and then this pattern restarts. For example, the last dot in the drum one is green, but then in drum two, this green dot restarts the pattern. To get to the correct answer, we need to continue shifting the pattern and get to the correct pattern for drum number four. And the correct pattern for drum number four will be pink, purple, green, white, yellow, and blue. And drum that matches this pattern will be choice C. Did you get to the correct solution? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments. I love this question because it tests your spatial reasoning and analytical skills so well. You're presented with overlapping set of objects. We have in the picture pink square, red star, gray circle, yellow star, green circle, blue box, and pink diamond. In the middle of the picture, we have a gap where nothing is presented, and this gap is represented by the question mark. You need to fill the gap with one of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can fill the gap and find the missing object. I'm pretty sure you got it, because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The correct answer here is choice C. Let's confirm and verify it by moving this choice to fill the gap. To solve these types of challenges, you need to mentally build the object in your head by continuing to visualize in your head one of the existing objects in the picture. I used green circle. It is very obvious which choice would continue the green circle. But you can also use yellow star, blue square, or pink square. Do you know any other ways how to solve these problems? Please make sure to post your ideas on how to better solve them in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and help you to pass any test. If the content was helpful, please click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and when you tell us, we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description. 
you can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to download the materials. I really appreciate you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a YouTube member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.